All right, people. Well, uh, today's video is about lubrication. As you well know, uh, these are air-cooled uh, engines. <clears throat> um, they usually require some of thicker oils if you live in a hotter uh, climate, 20W50. Uh, if you live in a cooler region, 1040. But the point is, uh, they heavily rely on oil as a coolant because as it circulates it absorbs heat and that heat obviously uh, that's taken away from uh, the heads needless to say that is going to cool the engine there is no liquid cooling here so lubrication is very important the reason I'm doing this is uh, well that requires an anecdote to tell a friend of mine he has a 1986 1100 and they, rec uh, they, they um, found a, a bit of an issue with it. They changed the oil in the spring at some point. The bike slowly developed a rattle, an interesting loud clicking sound after the oil change. Basically they tried to do every uh, trick in the book, uh, not knowing what's going on. They even took apart uh, a few bits in the in the cylinder heads obviously they checked the the valve clearances um, they checked um, the camshafts and the cam chain tensioners and all that rubbish but uh, what it boiled down to it was a bad oil filter now to understand uh, what's going on I need to tell a bit more about uh, the actual lubrication system of this bike you have the oil pump on the other side if uh, you're more interested or if you're interested how that works what is driven uh, what it looks like and how to clean it I also have a video about that but the point is that the oil pump is on the other side and that picks up the oil from the bottom of the crankcase and uh, pushes the oil through little passages into this cavity here that's where the oil filter is and normally that little cover is held by three um, Allen uh, bolts and this kitty comes out like that a word of warning uh, quite a few people have a tendency to break the tabs off this because once you remove the three allens let's put this back just a sec so once you remove that that's in there and it is quite stiff and then you try and grab a screwdriver and pry it off which is a bad idea. The easiest and simplest way of taking it off is twisting like so and once it's twisted a few times twist it this way uh, clockwise and try to pull it with your finger with your fingernails because there is going to be a little lip and just gently pull it but you have to twist it to break the seal and once that's done the cover comes off no problem whatsoever also there is an o-ring here that uh, well keep an eye out for that before reassembly make sure it's in there otherwise otherwise you will get a huge leak now my point is that the oil comes in here it goes through the filter and then it is going to get pumped up in this direction you see this here that is a banjo bolt uh, that delivers the oil to this oil pipe and there's an oil pipe going to the front head as well now that passage goes this way inside the clutch cover in the clutch cover you also have an oil seal and uh, there is actually a t-junction so to speak as the oil comes out of here it enters that passage and about where the the Yamaha logo is there is the oil seal that is pushed on the end of the crankshaft and some of the oil goes to the crankshaft pushing oil towards the connecting rods and uh, the big ends uh, to lubricate those also you have a little oil squirter that uh, uh, spits some oil up to the bottom of the the piston so that lubricates the bottom end and then some of the oil is redirected uh, to this uh, banjo bolt and the rest of the oil goes to the top end 
there are other funky things regarding the oil pump because it does not look like it but it has two rotors on the inside in two uh, separate chambers uh, the larger uh, pair of rotors they deliver this oil uh, or this passage they feed this passage and there's a smaller one which uh, delivers uh, unfiltered oil which does not come through the oil filter so it just it gets picked up from the the strainer and that is delivered to the transmission essentially so oil is fed to the middle drive uh, gear section and of course uh, the gearbox itself so this is the main uh, passage that usually has issues now on early bikes and I can't tell you what year what specific model because it happened at random but it was in the early years uh, between 81 and 85 or 86 something like that before uh, the 1100 came out so that mainly affects the 750s the early ones the 920s uh, some 700s and uh, uh, XV 1000s these banjo bolts and these banjo bolts weren't manufactured properly some of them uh, did not have uh, they, they weren't uh, drilled all the way through essentially you have an axial uh, bore and you have a, um, a bore that goes across it so it's like a t-shaped channel and the oil comes up and squirts out to the side and that's how it feeds these and um, in some cases these bolts weren't drilled all the way through so oil came up to that point but it stopped there and it did not uh, provide lubrication to the top ends it might not be that drastic though uh, because in some cases there was some sort of a bore but it wasn't large enough to pump um, a substantial volume to the heads um, to do the job so take this banjo bolt out and have a look uh, there are people in Germany who are really knowledgeable about these uh, these engines uh, like Sepp Koch or um, there's also uh, Greg Sokor for example uh, also known as Nano uh, and uh, he's got a, a, a really good blog uh, greasygreg.blogspot.com I think uh, it's worth it's worth uh, taking a look because that guy is a genius it's got all sorts of different things, uh, interesting takes on the engines. But the point is, these guys are really knowledgeable. And uh, one of their advice, uh, essentially the advice came from them, that this has to be drilled uh, this direction. Because um, the uh, across, um, so the, the horizontal, shall we say, if you hold the bolt up, upright like that, so this hole is usually big enough, but this, uh, the axial bore, is usually a bit too small. So what Sapcock said, that uh, if you need to make that larger because it is tight, uh, drill it up to 2.4, 2.5 millimeters, not larger than that, because in that case, it will be uh, too much oil will be pushed to the heads and too little gets to the crankshaft. So in this case, on my bike, this only got 2.2 millimeters just to be on the safe side but the point is um, that yeah that's how the, the lubrication works and uh, if you have a noisy top end on an early bike have a look because it is much better to have a look in time uh, because as an engine rebuild is, is, a re is, is, is a rather expensive venture now the pro point is uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to replace that oil seal because after 30 something years like in my case that seal probably does not seal properly against the crankshaft my bike is not noisy but my friend's bike was rather noisy and like I said they went through all sorts of different options they checked uh, the rocker arms the rocker shafts everything seems to be okay the funny thing was that they could not see any wear on the on the parts but still it was clacking away and uh, I talked to Greg uh, and uh, he said how about this um, seal is that okay is that new and I said oh bloody hell that makes sense because that's 30 something years old 35 to be exact and uh, if the oil that is pushed up there is not reaching this bolt 
but it squirts um, outside the seal because it is too old, cracked, hardened or whatever, then obviously you're going to have a loss of pressure and volume. So I told my friend to order a seal and replace it. Um, and yeah, that's what they did. They ordered a seal, but in the end they did not have to replace it because the problem with his bike was the oil filter. And that's another thing I have to point out. On a lot of times uh, when lubrication problems occur, it's the user's fault or the person's fault who did the servicing. Because the oil filter on Viragos is like this. It's a little paper cartridge sort of filter and this one has a hole on the front and just a relief valve on the back. And uh, when people look inside the engine, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, there's that cast pattern. And that would suggest that, oh, I have to put this in with the, the nose in. Wrong. Essentially, you have to put it in this way. On 700s, 750s, 920s, 1000s and 1100s, that's how the oil filter should go in with the hole facing out. On 535s, that's how it goes in. It uses the same filter, but backwards. Now, if you try to insert the filter backwards, because you don't know what you're doing, or because you work at a, a bike shop, or the person who did it works at a bike shop, and they do a lot of 535s, they might get confused and they put the filter in the same way and that is a problem because when the oil comes in it cannot exit out on this side and that's where it should go the oil comes out here as you can see and there is this passage on the top so the oil comes up here and goes this way there is a hole in the crankcase or the crankcase cover rather and that hole goes here so there's a line a straight line and that's where the oil exits the filter cavity so if you put this in backwards there's no way any oil will get to the crank or the heads uh, every bit of oil will, will squirt back into the engine through the relief valve which is deep down uh, but it doesn't really matter so in my friend's case it was the filter it turned out that the filter was stored in a basement for seven or eight years and the paper uh, material was uh, clumped together so once they took it out it was visible that it was collapsed and whatnot so they just replaced it and the, the rattling went away now like I said my bike is not loud as far as the, the valve train is concerned but since it's 30 something years old I'm going to replace the seal and I'm going to show you where it is and I'm going to show you the oil passage as well just so you know how this whole thing uh, goes together and how the lubrication works in uh, in these engines so I put the oil filter to one side and the cover to one side one more thing if you have an old bike like mine and you have peeling chrome and you happen to find a, a rather cheap 1100 uh, cover or 750 cover that is uh, a more recent uh, production like this is the one of the the flat side or slap side engines where this is flat and this is flat and you have this funky looking protrusion on the old cover this is the old style engine uh, cover the new ones are domed they have a little rounded uh, clutch uh, section and they also have um, a domed uh, Yamaha badge without these wings and the lines and whatnot. So if you happen to find one of them and you want to put it on your old engine which originally had one of these covers you also need this because the hole is not in the same place. So this hole it faces that way but on the newer ones the hole goes a bit about a half an inch or 10 millimeters uh, clockwise I think so it's not in the same angle. So if you try to use your new cover with an oil, old oil filter cover, um, the, the holes will not line up. And again, you cut your lub lubrication off and you won't get enough oil fed to the crank or the heads. Uh, so yeah, just so you know. Now, in order to gain access to that oil seal that I mentioned, <clears throat> we need to take the cover off 
uh, prior to taking the cover off obviously you have to take off the brake lever which is an easy task you have that pinch bolt that uh, you undo <clears throat> then you can pull this off unhook the uh, brake spring the other thing you have to remove obviously is let me get this thing the other thing you have to remove is the footrest uh, bracket which is held here and of course on the front so you just take that off and then everything's accessible needless to say you have to drain the oil as well before you dig in okay so the clutch cover is off and as you can see everything's alright behind the cover here however is the old seal that is uh, kept in place by this metal plate and the metal plate the retaining plate is held by two allen bolts which need to be uh, undone and uh, once that's done we can just pry out the old seal before I reassemble everything I'm going to check the passage as well with some brake cleaner so I'm going to squirt some of the stuff down there and see if uh, the brake cleaner comes out uh, properly uh, via both holes because this sits on the end of the crankshaft and feeds the oil into the big end and uh, this hole is sealed by the paper gasket and uh, that is going to feed uh, the lubricant into this banjo bolt so as you can see there's this um, how shall I put it the protrusion in the casting uh, and that's the T-junction that I mentioned right there so some of the oil uh, pushed up pumped up from the the filter housing uh, comes to here and some of it goes there and it enters the crankcase or the inside of the crankcase right there and the oil is fed to the banjos uh, or the banjo to uh, feed the heads so I'm going to undo these two bolts and I'm going to pry the seal out and I'll show you how that goes back in place that's what the seal looks like and that's what it sounds like it's hard as a rock and I'll show you the new one and it is much nicer and it has a more snug oh yeah a much more snug fit on the end of the crankshaft this one just slips on and it is loose this one on the other hand it's quite nice and snug so probably in my case as like I said it, it wasn't uh, uh, super noisy the top end but it was rather close in my opinion because this one the new seal is a much better fit uh, against the, the tip of the crankshaft so yeah, um, undoing the retaining plate was uh, <coughs> fairly straightforward. Obviously you remove, well I just remove the one and uh, loosen the other. And this one can be pried out nicely. And then we take the new one. I'll get some engine oil to lubricate the surfaces. Like so. Let's, uh, push the new seal in place and then I'll just uh, take the retaining plate and uh, tighten it down once again uh, now as you can see I uh, scraped off the gasket material because the bloody thing was brittle and well it's old probably that was the OEM uh, gasket fitted in 1986 or something so I'm going to apply a new one this is uh, not an OEM gasket this is an Italian aftermarket uh, gasket it's um, made by a company called Athena uh, honestly I'm not a big fan of it and it's uh, a rather mediocre product but um, I need to rebuild the clutch in a few years time I just checked the plates and uh, it could do with a set of fresh friction plates at some point uh, but yeah for a few years that should do the job once it's all scraped off and you confirm that it is a nice and smooth surface get some grease 
and apply it lightly to the surface so that holds the gasket in place and it won't let the paper gasket shift and move and bend up out of shape uh, cause obstructions when you try to fiddle with the big heavy and slippery clutch cover if a little bit of grease gets inside just by chance that's not a big deal uh, the engine oil will dissolve it uh, as long as the grease does not contain any friction modifiers like graphite or anything like that it should be all good and this is just a basic normal grease that I use right here so like, like you see it's just a really thin layer or just a little bit at spots so when I push the gasket in place it's just basically to glue the gasket on there we go that's good enough so when I apply the new gasket I can put that in position and the grease will glue the thing on nicely like that and it's uh, not on the dowel at the moment so I'll push this on so yeah there we go easy as that now once the new seal is back in place and you tighten the the bolts down and uh, well check if there's any uh, gasket scrapings of course uh, at the bottom of the of the crankcase and remove uh, if there's any obviously don't want to clog um, your oil strainer or oil filters um, or oil passages for that matter because that's also a catastrophic problem or cause a catastrophic problem so yeah once everything's done you can just put this thing back together and yeah you don't need a demonstration I think so yeah that would be it uh, that's um, all I can tell you off the top of my head regarding the the lubrication system and its known weak points uh, take it for what it's worth so yeah don't like don't subscribe that's all I can say Cheers.